Hello everyone, my name is Jason Gregerson. In this video we're going to build upon our earlier discussion about coordinate systems, but this time we're going to use the coordinate system to help relate an abstract vector space to a more familiar vector space, Rn. And once again we're going to start with the theorem. As we've seen before, the unique representation theorem says the following. It says if you give us a basis for a vector space V, then for each vector in that space, there exists a unique set of C's such that X can be written as a linear combination of the basis vectors. And we call those constants, the weights of the basis vectors, the coordinates of X relative to B. But in this video, I want to focus on these keywords. There exists and unique. Now once again, because this is a basis for a vector space, we know that it must be onto, therefore there always exists this representation. So that's why we know there exists. And because these basic vectors are linearly independent, we know this representation must be unique. But using this verbiage of onto and one to one makes us think about the transformation that's being represented here. So consider the following transformation that takes our x vectors and it maps them to the coordinates of x with respect to this new basis beta. Thinking about this transformation, this transformation is really a mapping from our vector space v to our other vector space, our more familiar vector space, rn. And this transformation, as we've seen, is one to one and onto. In fact, we're going to be able to say even more. In fact, we're going to be able to say that T is also a linear transformation. And to summarize all ideas, we have the following theorem. It says, let B be a basis for a vector space, then the coordinate mapping of X to its coordinates is a one-to-one -one linear transformation from V onto Rn. And this is a very special types of transformation. In fact, we call this type of transformation an isomorphism. An isomorphism is a one-to-one -one linear transformation from V onto Rn. It's called an isomorphism. And it tells us that even though these two spaces may look very different and the notation within them might be very different, they actually act the same. In fact, every vector space calculation in V, we can also do in our W, or in this case, in Rn. So in other words, maybe we have some abstract vector space and we can add subtract vectors, we can add multiples of vectors to each other. Any calculation we can do in V, we can instead do a transformation of the coordinates in Rn, then do that calculation and then transform back to our vector space V because these two spaces are essentially indistinguishable to us. Let's look at an example. Let V be the set of all two by two real matrices. If this is the case, then one basis for this vector space would be the following four matrices. So this should be a basis for this space. Now as a good exercise, it would be a good idea to show that this is a basis for the space. We would have to show that they're linearly independent and that they span the space. So you can do that and check your work on your own time. But for this problem, we're just gonna accept the fact that it is a basis for the space. And then we're going to talk about the transformation that maps x to the coordinates in terms of this basis. And this transformation is an isomorphism from our vector space V to R4. R4 because we're representing this vector space V with four basis vectors. So let's look at a specific vector in our space. Let x equal the vector, in this case, I'm going to call it 1, 0, sorry, 1, 2, 0, 3. This is a vector in our vector space because our vector space is set of all 2 by 2 real matrices, and this is a 2 by 2 real matrix. But if this is our vector, then I can talk about the coordinates of this vector in terms of the basis. And the coordinates in this case, the coordinate vector would be, well, I can get this matrix as a linear combination of these four matrices if I take one of the first matrix, plus two of the second matrix, plus zero of the third matrix, plus three of the four matrix. So in other words, if I take one of these, 
plus two of these plus zero of these and three of these and I add them all together I really will get this matrix thus the coordinates for this matrix are one two zero three and sure enough this is a vector that is in R4 let's look at another vector in our vector space we could look at this one this one is two zero four one this implies that the coordinates of this vector in terms of our basis would be two zero four one and once again this is also in R4 and so what do we mean by the fact that this transformation is linear well now if I wanted to look at two of my vector X plus two of plus my vector Y well, if I just did this calculation with our matrices I would have two four zero six plus two zero four one and if I add these things together I'll get four 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 seven That's just doing those calculations in the actual vector space. But because there's really no difference between our vector space and our four, because we can think of this mapping to the, to the coordinates as, a, as an isomorphism, I can also do this transformation like this. I can first take my x and look at the coordinates of x, and then the coordinates of y, and just do this calculation on those coordinates. And here I'll get two times my vector 1, 2, 0, 3, plus my vector 2041. I'll do this multiplication to get 2406 plus 2041. This will be 4447. And sure enough, if that's the coordinates of some other vector, if I look at what that representation would be in the actual vector space, this would be the matrix 4447. So in some sense, because I have an isomorphism from the vector space, to R4, it doesn't really do, matter where I do the calculations. There's really nothing that distinguishes my original vector space of two by two matrices and my very familiar vector space of R4. Now we're gonna look at one more example. Now I'm not gonna work out this example in that quite the same way, but I am just gonna describe another situation where we can take this idea of an abstract vector space mapping to um, a very familiar one, R, R something. So I think of the set of all polynomials of degree less than N. There's an isomorphism that maps this thing to its coordinates, which look like something in Rn. For example, if I look at the set of all polynomials of degree less than 2, I think of what a basis for that vector space might be. I could look at this basis. That could be my basis for this vector space. Because if I look at any polynomial, for instance, this polynomial, 3 minus 6x plus 4x squared, this really just looks like 3 times my first basis vector plus a negative 6 times my second basis vector plus 4 times my third basis vector. So this is really just a linear combination of my basis vectors. So now I have a basis. And if I think about it in this way, I can say that if this is some vector in my space, then the coordinates of V with respect to this basis would just be the coordinates 3, negative 6, and 4. So I can see that there is an isomorphism between this vector space, a set of all polynomials of degree less than 2, and the more familiar vector space, R3. And so we continue to create other examples like this. So this concludes this video that describe how to use coordinate systems to relate abstract vector spaces to more familiar ones like Rn. Thank you.